Hey, we're coming back locked on Bulldogs today. We had planned to do something else, Daniel and I, and then we got news. Wait a second. Number one quarterback in the entire nation said, I want to bring my talents to Athens. And so we said, let's talk recruiting. We're talking Dylan Ryle, a number one recruit coming to Georgia with recruiting expert right after this locked on Bulldogs. You are locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen. I am Clint. This is Brian Smith, uh, recruiting guy down in Florida. He's in the South. He knows these players. He's been to all them camps. Uh, Brian, good to have you with us today, sir. Thank you very much. It's uh, been a rather eventful day on the recruiting trail for a lot of teams, but I think Georgia probably has the most reason to rejoice. Uh, there has been a lot of news. We're going to get to some rumors and some moving and some shaking and some unofficials and of officials down the road. It has been exciting, but yes, let's not bury the lead. Let's give the people what they come for. And that is Kirby Smart, Mike Bobo have decided, you know what? I know we got Puglisi, who, by the way, I'm still dog fans. I love this kid. I love Puglisi. However, you can't have too much. And they said, we want more. And they went out and they got the number one recruit in the entire nation and at a position that some may say is premier, which is the quarterback position. Dylan Raiola out of Phoenix, Arizona, commits to the dogs today. He is bringing that five-star incredible talent in. So let's break down that news. What? Tell me, tell me just so people can understand. We'll get to his number one ranking, but a player of this magnitude in this cycle in this stage of it, having, having said no to Nebraska, no to the USC's, no to Ohio State, but yes to Georgia, try to put in perspective what this means for dog fans. I think it's over the hump. Ooh. It's the only spot that Georgia has, has struggled with. I mean, it's, it was, let's just be blunt. Most quarterbacks didn't want to play in Kirby's offense. I've talked to several off the record about it but they started to open it up at least a little bit. Now the offensive coordinator that just took off for the Ravens. Yep. He was tremendous. He's not the most fun guy to be around from what I've heard and didn't like recruiting at all. And that's why I went back to the NFL, but he could coach, but that also set Kirby up at least short term to say, Hey, look, we will throw it around. If it wasn't for the passing game, they wouldn't have beat Alabama a couple years ago. That's right. It won him the game in the, in the second. It did. How often do you say, well, the passing game was the key for Georgia tonight. Not, not very often, but so that's when somebody like Rayola, when he was just first kind of like he was probably like a freshman in high school or whatever then at mm -hmm. that time, that was a big deal to him seeing that. And he's kind of grown up with a little bit different than what you or I might think of than Georgia. So that's kind of an important point. Now you get him and that changes the receiver board, the running back board, the tight end, because historically speaking, it doesn't matter the sport, great players want to play with great players. There you go. George has always done that on defense. That's no secret either. But when was the last time they got the number one quarterback? It was it was Matt Stafford and Justin Fields. These were the last time. And, and the Justin Fields, we know how that played out. And the Matt Stafford, we know how that played out. And so Georgia That's hears you mean. say, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you get big-time quarterbacks, you have a better chance to win. Yep. I'm not, you know. Let's let's keep it simple. It's the forest for the trees here. There's there's no thing, you know, there's nothing behind door number two. This matters. Yes. So now the real question is they've got a couple of slots and they've got the kid you and I talked about last time. They got the tuggle kid. You know, they've got players, but can they get that next level guy at receiver, that next level guy at tight end again? Uh, Brock Bowers is, by the way, still ridiculous. Got to mention Brock every now and then. He's just every every time we're on this <laughs> podcast, that name gets dropped. <laughs> That's right. But that'll keep kids like that coming in. Kirby has done a tremendous job of getting the key defensive linemen and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And they get most of those kids, quite honestly, within a 200-mile radius of campus. It's insane. But quarterback, you don't think about Georgia recruiting the state of Arizona very much. But no. if it's a five-star kid, you don't care. You know, yeah. Ringo, they went out and got kids. Like, you yeah. know, there's a few different kids you've got to do that. This is an exception. So – I, I think it's important because now the other teams are on note. If you don't match this, you're not going to match us on defense. You better find something else or we're going to kill you. 
That's exactly right. CJ Stroud, I I thought last year, you can look Bryce Young, I got no knock on him other than he's tiny, but uh, CJ Stroud to me was the most prolific college uh, guy coming out into the draft because he took on Georgia's defense and went toe to toe. I mean, the guy did not have quit in it. And you have to have a guy like that to go up against Georgia. Otherwise, Absolutely. you're toast, you're done. And so now the guy who is CJ Stroud, wait a second. Oh, you can't have him because he's in Athens. And I think to your point, the two things that I see from this one, Todd Munkin was an incredible, incredible offensive mind. Yeah, grumpy old man. Kirby just let him sit up in a box and just call out play after play after play and not deal with anything else. You want to go to the NFL. Totally understood. Mike Bobo just sat for a year and Kirby said, follow what that man does in totality and don't ask questions. And so the offense is the same this year. And now Mike Bobo, who has recruited well before, hello, has put up points well before, has this offensive system. And y'all thought that it was really weird when Kirby was winning with defense and run games and we had Grayson Lambert and all of those quarterbacks before. Now y'all screwed up and you let Kirby go out and get the premier quarterback at the position. Like, like this is not just rich getting richer. This is filthy rich getting filthy richer. And it's just ridiculous. This does put us over the top, put us over that hump. And now all bets are off. It's like a, it's like a downhill derby at this point. And the second point that you brought up is so good. The, the footprint of Georgia's recruiting is in Phoenix, Arizona. Like, like he's it's bizarre. Just, it's it's bizarre. so bizarre. He's just going in where he wants at this point. And he does, he cherry picks five star kids or a three star that nobody knows about. And he's going to, he's going to develop them into a Jordan Davis, into somebody like that, into a Stetson Bennett, these sorts of things. Uh, over the hump is correct. I'm going to come back. I'm going to ask Brian uh, why Dylan Raiola is in fact the number one quarterback uh, right after this. But first, I want to let you know about Bird Dog. I'm not going to embarrass y'all by standing up right now, but I am no joke wearing Bird Dog shorts right now. I don't think I should stand up. My, my legs aren't in summer shape yet. I got to get that front squat machine going. But the Bird Dogs are fantastic shorts. They are comfortable. They are, they are stretch. Uh, if you want to listen to a dad pod, we got a dad pod for you as well. Maybe you have a dad bod and you need some give in those shorts. Well, I'm telling you right now, Bird Dog is the place to go. Bird Dog, uh, they are comfortable. They have that liner in there. They're made with incredible material. Uh, they fit insanely comfortable. They fit insanely great. Uh, they are the premier short. And right now, you can go ahead and with the order for Locked On, you can get a free tumbler. That's birddogs.com, the best shorts that you can find. I'm wearing them right now. I love them. They're comfortable. You go over there right now, and you put in the promo code Locked on college. That's birddog.com slash locked on college. Put in the promo code locked on college and get a free Yeti style tumbler with every single order that you make. Uh, they are fantastic. Get over there right now. Birddogs.com slash locked on college. Promo code locked on college for a free tumbler. All right. Let's get to why Dylan is, in fact, this incredible talent. He is consensus number one player as well as number one quarterback. Brian, what stands out to you of why he is, in fact, worthy of that number one seed, number one uh, title within the recruiting process? First off would be measurables. Uh, his father, for people that don't know, was starting center at Nebraska, was a big time player, went on to play for Detroit and some other teams. His dad was a war daddy. First off, coming from here, I remember that guy was an animal. So mm -hmm. he carries a little bit of that mentality in the way he plays. He's, he's definitely a gunslinger. He's kind of a Brett Favre style player. Okay. Takes some throws in high schools that aren't going to work well in the SEC, but that's what coaching is for. And then he's just humongous. Uh, for a kid his, his age, I mean, as a sophomore, he looked like he was already in the NFL. So if you can take that frame, and obviously George's strength and conditioning program is tremendous. They're just going to fine tune it. You don't have to do a lot, really. He's about as close physically as you're going to get. And then you just look at the arm strength. If you watch his mm. sophomore film, it's deep throw after deep throw. And it's because he can do things other kids cannot. So George is going to be able to run the ball. You've got to put seven, eight in the box. You're going to have to play one-on-one -on -one outside, and that plays into Rayola's hands. That's the more important thing than his ranking, to be honest. He fits their offense. They want to play some vertical. And I do believe that all his physical tools will make it very easy for him to come into Athens and compete pretty early. That's exactly right. You go look at the film on this. 
Uh, and and we've been on this podcast saying before, stop it with the dual threat and, and pro style quarterback. If you're a quarterback now in the world, you must be able to be mobile and be able to co- get around the pocket. Joe Burrow comes to mind. Nobody will look at him and say, well, he's in car-. But he moves the pocket. He's mobile in the pocket. He is dual threat in that his legs are going to give him some yardage if things break down. And you look at Dylan Riola's film and yeah, that arm talent that people talk so much about. I mean, the angles and how he contorts his body on the run roll rolling to his right or to his left. It doesn't really matter. And he has zip on this ball. I, I saw one film kid doing a, a I think like a 15 yard out as Dylan was booting back through. And he puts zip on this ball where you think this kid is, is too close to the sideline to get this ball. It's not going to get there in time. And all of a sudden it is right there in his hands, right in the pocket. So I think that arm talent, that deep throw esque, and even when people hear the, the moniker Brett Farr, they, they get a little scared off, but I think exactly to your point, there is a difference between this kid having having no fear fearless mentality and reckless mentality Uh, and those are two very very different things and it sounds like as i watch film of dylan he's he's a very very smart kid with these measurables that again mike bobo hello do we know any quarterback that's done well aaron murray uh, stafford all the rest of them that can get coached on it Uh, so his ceiling so to speak brian what's that ceiling like for him number one pick in the draft yes sir that's what he can. I mean, he could be a bust like any other kid if you don't sure. work hard and get in trouble. But based on who his dad is and where he's at already, where he was even as a sophomore in high school, that's unlikely. Really, the only thing that derails him is if he does something dumb or he gets hurt. Because physically, if he stays healthy, he's getting drafted. So that's right. That's, that's right. I know that's a really generic, boring answer, but it's also the correct one. It, it is. And and again, you look at what the, the quarterback situation is now. And yeah, if you are if you are strong and big and can be mobile and can contort and make all the weird angle throws and all the passing tree, you're not the only one saying this. I mean, everybody is saying that this is this is unlike other kids that have come out that are just physical talent. And now, Georgia fan, two things can be true. We missed out on Arch Manning. Don't do the game of, oh, he just got recruited because of last name. That kid's real, too. However, we got Dylan Raiola, which is a huge get for us, and he might be better. He might again how the trips lay. It's a lot of pick, but right now he's starting off percentage wise with the with the physicality and the motive again that motivation, which that's what Kirby excels in getting these kids oh, to play is going to be key, right? Yeah. You you said last time you were on here, Brian, he has no chill. Like he just he just doesn't care. Again, this <laughs> this is what he does so well, and this is why kids want to come play for him in his system that is going to set them up for success. Uh, We're going to come back after this. I'm going to ask Brian a couple of names. We have the term domino and now there's crystal balls and there's predictions and there's rumors of kids wanting to play with the best. We're going to come back right after this and talk those names. All right, we're back and we are talking names that uh, might be of interest on the recruiting trail still. By the way, if you are here and you're part of the 199, thanks for being here. Loyal third segment listeners are part of the 199. If you don't know what the 199 is, there's a podcast guy from Kentucky. I, I don't know. I don't know. He, he's, a, he's a dude that said probably no more than 199 of you listen to us, but we're here. There's much more than you. Third segment listeners, thanks so much for being here. Uh, get on over to bonfire.com slash store slash the 199 to get our merch. Uh, Brian, I'm going to give you some names of these dominoes that are falling now. Jeremiah Smith, Ryan Wingo, and Sammy Brown. Three names that have been tied. Our guy Pat on Twitter has been talking about some of these things. There's three names, a couple wide receivers, a linebacker. The best want to play with the best. Is that not right, Brian? That's that's what calls 100%. Okay. 100%. Okay. These guys are the best at what they do. Top 10 level talent all the way through. Give us a rundown of those names, a couple wide receivers, a couple linebackers that may want to come now that Dylan is in the fold. Uh, Sammy's my one of my favorite guys to watch on film. I was actually watching some of his film earlier today. If, whether you're a Georgia fan or not, he's a kid that 230-ish or whatever he is. He's playing running back in high school. It's just hilarious. And he just kind of runs over a kid like a bowling ball. And he can still make some kids miss. But he could play like four spots for Georgia. Linebacker, pick which spot you want. He could even be an edge. Uh, if you wanted to play him on offense, he's got hands. He could be an H-back tight end. Okay. Those are the kinds of kids. I'm sure Rayola is probably going to try to talk to Kirby about the H-back thing. But Kirby's a defensive guy. So we'll, right. we'll see how that works out. That's right. Um, as far as Jeremiah Smith, I've said it many times. He's my pick as the number one player in the country. But I know him. I live, you know, live in Florida. Uh, they're trying hard. I'm curious now because he recently set up a visit. He's committed to Ohio State yes, with sir. Florida and Georgia and some other schools are trying to get him to visit. 
He's been up to Florida State for an unofficial. He's been to Miami for an unofficial. Now I'm more interested in Georgia. Okay. Once you have a quarterback, it's one thing. It's helpful. But now it's it's Rayola. I haven't talked to Jeremiah in a week or two, but um, in a month or so, it would be interesting for somebody to have an interview with him and say, what has Rayola told you and is Georgia really trying to get you to come? Yes. Because, yes. I mean, you have to at least be interested, right? I mean, you're human. If you're a receiver, you want a good quarterback. So – that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Again, Ohio State coming in this year, no C.J. Stroud uh, against Michigan. A lot of people pick in Michigan to win the conference and go on to the college football playoff. Ohio State has tons of talent. We know this all the way around, but who's that quarterback? I think they got talented kids stacked up there. I don't think they're going to have a problem. However, there is a question mark. With Dylan, you know him. Uh, your understanding of Jeremiah is that it's it, – Ohio State, again, committed leader in the clubhouse, is going to take a lot to unseat him. So so I think dog fans just kind of uh, just throttle that back a little bit. I would I would wait, but again, if somebody's going to flip him, do you really think Florida's going to flip him with their quarterback situation? I do not. No, sir. But he is visiting there. Sure. I have no idea why. That's his business. Sure. But, you know, if I'm a receiver, I'm going to go play with a great quarterback. Uh, look, I was that guy that gals would date to know what not to like, and then you go find the guy that you want. Maybe that's what Florida is right now to Jeremiah. He just needs to know this is not what I don't want, so I know what I do want. Um, and and that Sammy Brown, yeah, he, that kid. Uh, when we talk measurables and we talk fast, oh man, he's he's electric. I don't know electric. I mean, I mean. Words fail to talk about just how twitchy this guy is at the bulk that he has. And it's not just straight right. line speed. It's all the way across. And and when you're thinking, well, he plays defense. Why would it really matter? We want receivers and tight ends, probably about the quarterback. But again, when you're an ultra competitor, when you're the top upper crust of, of recruits in the nation, you have camaraderie. You see other people that are just as competitive that have that killer instinct like you. Uh, and so Sammy Brown has no no ch uh, 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 chill when it comes to trying to play with the best. And Ryan Wingo, this is another wide receiver kid uh, that's been rumored. Same another four or five star. I would put him on the five star side. I've seen tape of him. And and when I say t I love Tuggle, uh, if if I were to rank him, I, again, I give it to Wingo. This kid is something else. He's not the Jeremiah Smith polish yet on it, but he does have intangibles. Um, and Georgia has a lot of receivers already in the fold. Nykar. Tuggle, and now you're looking at maybe one other. Um, when a kid like Ryan Wingo comes up uh, uh, and now Dylan Ryolan's in the fold, uh, talk to me through who's the other competitors maybe that that might be looking at somebody like that and might steer away. That's His recruitment has been wild. It has been Miami, it's Tennessee, it, it's Missouri, it, it, Notre Dame was in at one point, Ohio State recruit. He has offers from everybody. And I met him last year at a seven-on tournament, the battle tournament in New Orleans. Great kid. And for his size, like his burst is like, oh, who is that? So he's big. Yeah. He's 6'2, 205, and he can run like a 5'9, 170 kid. Good problem to have. Yes. But I have no idea where he's going to end up. Like he's one of four or five kids in the country. Not a clue. His yeah. recruitment is all over the map. But again, like I mentioned with Ray, with the Rayola Smith situation. If that doesn't help you, then maybe he's not the right kid for your program. That's the other part. Uh, at some point, you would think another receiver would join in, and part of it is going to be the appeal to play with a guy that has an NFL arm when he was like a sophomore in high school. Yes. Guess, that's my opinion, but that makes sense. That's exactly right. It feels to me how this recruitment process goes. Uh, if Wingo is the guy and Georgia wants him and they don't think they can unseat Jeremiah Smith from Ohio State, it feels like Wingo is going to be sooner rather than later. And if not Wingo, then I do on on the final day, the final hour, the final push, one of these George Pickens-esque type flips that happens, totally surprised. That's where I look at Jeremiah Smith. Uh, so it's either going to be one of those in my estimation. It's not going to be both of them. I don't think we have uh, enough room on it, and I don't think it's going to happen. But I think if Wingo's their guy and if they feel confident about that, it might be sooner. It is still wild. You're right. Uh, who knows? Tennessee looks like the biggest player right now, but we will see going forward. Uh, Brian, tell the people where they can find you and interact with you uh, on all all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, FB scout underscore Florida. That's FB scout underscore Florida. I really enjoy talking it up with this, 
with this crew here um, locked on. I'll be on a lot of different, you'll see me floating around on different podcasts, but uh, I, I'm on Twitter the most and it's, it's just fun talking football this summer. We're, we're close. We're on that edge with all those visits. June and early July are going to be crazy because there's a lot of kids taking their visits early this year. Georgia, more than any other, I think they've got more visits lined up than any other Power Five school. A couple it's going unofficials to be just got moved up, and a couple of officials got landed. It it yeah. is going to be fun. June and July again, it, it just never stops, Brian. Yeah, Ju- June and July for Georgia fans will be interesting. I can't keep up with it, and it's what I do. So yeah. I can't imagine somebody with their hobby with spare time trying to keep up with Georgia. So. We no, we <laughs> there there are ears really? on the ground everywhere, and it's rumor central. We're checking checking uh, planes and helicopters. Where are the Kirby copter going? It's an insane, insane time. Uh, he is Brian Smith. Go find him, uh, FB Scout underscore Florida over on Twitter. Interact with him. This has been Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day, and we'll see y'all next time.